Hello friends, James Stevenson back with part three in my forecast review series. Let's talk about some charts uh, after I check in with my co-host Loki, who is still curled up behind his bun bun from part two. Uh, and I'll show you the next chart that's in my forecast review thread. I haven't posted it yet, but I can talk about the charts first and then post that thread, uh, which is what I will do. This one's talking about inventory production and deliveries, uh, and this is global, so I call that all sites and models in my title here. I've got a pull-down menu in my uh, file where I can zoom all the way down to any production location or any model. I've shown that off in a few videos before, uh, but uh, for this one, we'll just look at it in total. What are we looking at? Well, it's two stacked bar charts, one on top of the other. And it's the formula for ending inventory. If you've done inventory analysis before, you know that formula by heart. If you take beginning inventory, uh, maybe I should use Q1 of 2024 as my example. You had this many in your inventory at the start of the quarter that you hadn't delivered by the end of the, uh, the month that just ended. So that's what goods you had available for sale on day one of the quarter, right? Then you produced a bunch of vehicles. That's the orange here. So during this quarter, you produced all these vehicles and the stacked sum of those two, your beginning inventory plus your production, gives you your total goods that were available for sale during that quarter. From that, you can subtract this green bar here in Q1 of 2024, Tesla didn't do a great job selling through all of their inventory by the end of that month. And that meant the ending inventory was higher. So at the end of the quarter, there were a lot more vehicles in inventory. This was a record high. Tesla had never had this many vehicles in inventory at the end of Q1 2024. By far, they had never had anything close to that many. So it was over 100,000 vehicles in ending inventory by a lot that might have been like 150,000 vehicles in ending inventory then in q2 that ending inventory number becomes the beginning inventory for q2 right and then you produce this many vehicles which is actually less production in q2 than in q1 but more deliveries more of them got delivered by the end of the quarter in this green bar resulting in fewer vehicles in ending inventory, right? So this chart is just good for getting a very quick read on what's going on. Why does this number keep increasing as time goes by? Because Tesla's production keeps increasing, right? And Tesla is trying to end the wave. They've been trying for a while. You know, this was always unsustainable back in 2022 Q2. Look how small these are as a percentage of the total bar that may not seem worrisome to you but tesla was spending a lot of money trying to get every last vehicle delivered by the end of the quarter every time so that they would maximize their revenue and their earnings during that quarter well that's fine for each individual quarter but it's dumb as an overall strategy because you're taking on unnecessary expense trying to expedite deliveries to get them done by the end of the quarter and it's making all of your teams globally work inefficiently because you're getting most of your vehicles delivered in the last month of the quarter and you're hardly delivering anything in the first month of a quarter so your delivery teams don't have a lot of work to do in the first month of the quarter and they're overworked and working crazy overtime hours uh, the last month of the quarter and that has its own expense right it's not good for morale either. So Tesla was fixing all those problems over this time period. Uh, and now it's closer to about a third. That's what you want is for this number to get to maybe a little less than a third of the total stack. And that's a healthy amount of ending inventory to have on hand. Uh, the other way you can measure ending inventory is days of sales in ending inventory. And most companies are over 30 days of sales in ending inventory. Tesla has historically been below that, but they weren't in Q1 of 2024. That was more than uh, 20 or 30 days 
of sales. All right, that's probably enough said about that chart. Let's click through and show you this one. It's average revenue per delivery versus automotive gross uh, margin, excluding regulatory credits as a percent of revenue. What a mouthful. That's a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so what's this y-axis over here say? It says automotive gross margin, excluding regulatory credits. That's these bars. So the blue bars are telling you what the automotive gross margin excluding regulatory credits was. So let's throw the regulatory credits out and look at how well Tesla would have done if there were no such thing as regulatory credits. These percentages peaked in 2021, 2022, when Tesla was at low production and charging high prices for their vehicles. They have since increased production quite a lot and have stoked demand by reducing prices and the price reductions have eaten into Tesla's margin as time went by. Uh, in Q2 of 2024 at 14%, if you throw out four points worth of regulatory credits. So if you're looking at your uh, Tesla earnings letter and seeing 18% automotive gross margin, that's the number with four points worth of lift from regulatory credit sales. You throw those out, you're down to uh, 18. So I've got a similar number in Q3 for a similar quarter, which I think uh, we can expect Q3 to be very similar to what we saw in Q2, is, is my expectation. Then in Q4, things should pick up some. I've got ASPs rising, so that's what this is. The other y-axis gives you average revenue per delivery. You can see Way back in the past, Q1 of 2018, Tesla sold mostly S and X. Then as 2018 wore on, Tesla sold more and more Model 3s. And those Model 3 prices dragged down the weighted average for Tesla because Tesla was selling more Model 3s than they were selling Model S and X uh, by the end of 2018. So these really got dragged down quite a lot. Uh, and they were selling performance Model 3s for like 80 grand back then because people wanted their Model 3s after being on a waiting list for three years. How do I know? I was one of them. <laughs> I didn't get a performance Model 3. I got a, a Lemur, a limited edition mid-range Model 3. Uh, but that's the other thing you see on the chart here, the mountain range in the back that's the light teal color. Uh, I'm expecting some recovery in average selling prices in 2025. Some of this is that Tesla will sell more Cybertrucks at a higher price point than Model 3 or Model Y, and that will raise the average price. But we're also going through a pretty tough market right now, and I hope that turns around next year and uh, enables Tesla to raise some pricing or to uh, sunset some of the discount programs they've been engaging in, such as 0% uh, financing or whatever. Okay, here's the next long title chart. Tesla automotive revenue and cost of sales per cash delivery, excluding leased revenue and units sold as leased and regulatory credits. Okay, so we're still throwing out regulatory credits, but we're also throwing out the impact of leased vehicles. But why? Because you get them back three years after you sell them, and then you have to sell them again as used to somebody. So you don't get as much revenue up front when you're leasing a vehicle to somebody. That's why you would throw them out and then look at, okay, if we look only at the people who paid us, you know, full price for the car when they uh, took delivery of it, what do the ASPs look like? Well, you see the same trend that we just saw in the previous chart. Uh, previous chart's mountain range has now become these red bars. Those are giving you the average selling prices. Those came down a lot last year and have remained at lower levels this year. That's an actual 43.2 if you're saying, hey, James, don't forecast it to go up by $4,000 sequentially. That's not my forecast. These are actuals. <laughs> The actual uh, revenue per non-leased Tesla on average did rise by $3,500 from Q1 to Q2 of 2024. 
you know, right back to where it was the first part of last year-ish. So I've got a little bit more recovery happening here as Tesla sells more Cybertrucks. Will they be lowering prices as they sell more and more Cybertrucks? Yes, but they'll still be charging more for them than they charge for Model 3s or Model Ys uh, at a starting price uh, level. So that's why the weighted average increases this price as time goes by. Now, if Tesla starts selling a $25,000 car, uh, then we could see this go the opposite direction, but hopefully Tesla's not going to sell a $25,000 car unless there's, you know, call it, I would, I would think at least $5,000 worth of gross margin there, right? So if you want to sell a car for $25,000, it better be a car you can make for $20,000 or less. I, knowing Elon, as perhaps I think I do, uh, that's what I would hope he would expect from his team. They're not going to try to sell a new model at break-even or at a loss, even if they think later they can uh, make a ton of money uh, on driverless ride sharing, revenue sharing, which, you know, go see some of CERN Basher's analysis if you want to see how much Robotaxi can make. That's uh, a lot of money that's not in my forecast anywhere. Uh, if you believe in driverless Robotaxis happening sometime soon, I don't have that happening uh, by the end of 2025. Maybe it will. All right, what's this one? It's just giving you what we've been throwing out. <laughs> for the last two charts or more, which is the regulatory credits. So uh, Q2 of 2024, the most recent quarter, how much was the regulatory credits? It was an all-time record. There's never been that much uh, in regulatory credits alone. There was one very standout quarter, Q1 of 2022, that was nearly as much, uh, but... If you were listening to Gordon Johnson back in 2020 or 2021, he was saying regulatory credits are going away. Tesla won't be able to make this money anymore. Why did he think that? Because he thought every other automaker would be selling good EVs by now and that there would be competition and uh, that they wouldn't need to buy regulatory credits from Tesla because every automaker would be selling enough EVs already. Uh that uh, nobody would be able to uh, buy regulatory credits from Tesla, or nobody would want to because they would have sold enough EVs already. Well, what's happened? <laughs> We've set, you know, this record, and then these other ones would have been records if not for this one, right? Uh, and then another one. And I'm forecasting another one for Q1 of 2025. You have to forecast something for regulatory credits. That's what I have in for my regulatory credits forecast. We'll see what we get. Q3 2025 looks pretty low now that I'm glancing at it. Uh, it seems unlikely that it would go back to these levels with uh, so few competitors selling enough EVs. But uh, that's probably a pretty good place for me to end this video and check back in with Loki and see that uh, he's barely stirred from his spot. And I'll remind you to like the video if you liked the video. Click the thumbs up or click the heart, uh, depending on where you're watching me. Thank you to everybody who supports me, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com. And I'll see you in the next one.